Hey guys, welcome back to Toa of Tech. So, it has been about five months since I last uploaded a video. And that's because I've been very busy lately. Uh, I've actually been working a lot of double shifts and overtime and whatnot. Uh, all because I bought a house. So me and my girlfriend finally moved out. Yes, it is pretty awesome. This room's probably very echoey as you can hear. Uh, obviously because it's a new room. Uh, but I've also been doing some things on the side lately, some of which I can probably show you here. So, if I remember correctly, yeah, this here, I have been working on a little bit of uh, math and music stuff over the past few few weeks, I'd say. And essentially, it's, it's kind of a hack together thing. Um, I'll show you the code here. I believe it's under MIDI test. It's essentially a little script I wrote that takes in a mathematical function. For example, I believe I used the Fibonacci sequence. And it places it into a uh, MIDI track according to the definitions of the mathematical function. What does that exactly mean? Well, I have a math function. It's just a thing here, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes through the Fibonacci sequence, and then I basically uh, take the numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, divide them by a certain number in order to get them to a certain note from, I believe it's seven different notes. And that tracks it to a number which places it on a note, and then I add a certain number to it for the MIDI standard in order to make it probably somewhere around the middle C. And by doing that, it creates a melody. So yeah, code here. And I can even teach, show you where the melody is. Um. So what you're hearing right now is essentially I took the math and the MIDI and just tracked it to an already made sound in FL Studio. And by taking those sounds and putting them in there, I just literally, it's one of the easiest things to do after you get the math done. You just drop it in as a MIDI file, maybe adjust one or two things and let it, rip, let it go. And I also have FL Studio working in Linux. Now, it doesn't officially support it, but there's ways around it. So if I go into, uh, let's just open the file here. The DPI is really messed up on this right now because I haven't fixed it. But yeah, it's this is essentially the math I've been doing. Um, if I just go into my original pattern and go into pattern mode. So here is the bass line. This is just I basically copy and pasted another Fibonacci sequence MIDI track into here. And then this is that really cool, some cool parts to it. And then just that together is. So this is essentially where the actual MIDI comes in. Everything else is just kind of a uh, rhythmic drum pattern built in. And the actual, everything else is essentially actual uh, MIDI data from this little Python script. And uh, I essentially just made a small Python script just to find out the um, sequence itself for the Fibonacci sequence. I think I actually ripped this off a of Stack Overflow and added it into this little script, which is MIDI util for Python. It's, it's a pretty cool little thing. And if you want to know more about MIDI standard in order to make music, uh, you can go to midi.org. It has the entire MIDI specification. 
So if you want to know something from here, like say a number for a certain instrument, if it just tells you the number or like something the API calls for, it just input a number here to get said sound or something. This here is the standard and you can see like one to eight is piano, eight, 81 to 88 synth lead, that kind of stuff. Um, other than that though, let's see what else I've been up to guys. Uh, Blender I haven't been doing too much of. Uh, I tried doing something a while back. I don't know what exactly it was. Uh, open recent. I don't know, I tried doing like this weird ninja thing. I didn't know what I was doing. Based off of a few different things here. A few different images I have. So that's kind of cool. Um, I've been doing some programming. Um, this is actually a lightweight Java game lab engine that I've been starting to use. I just downloaded it today. This is all I got so far as a red square from the example they have on their page. And I, let's see, did I open it? Execute. I also installed 3D Coat. I did not buy it though. This is just a trial version. Um, to test it out and see if I can expand my tutorials to, from just Blender to something more, more inclusive, I suppose. And for some reason that's on opening, just give me a second here. It's been a long time since I made a video, so I apologize for that, guys. Um, hopefully I can be doing some more here soon. There we go. And if anybody wonder, is wondering what my background is, that is Angel from Angel Beats. Great anime. So yeah, I'm just gonna grab my pen tablet here and see what we can do just to kind of show you off what 3D code is. Now I do have another video where I mentioned 3D code as a um, sculpting package, but I really didn't go too in depth about it, I do believe. So, just gonna see what I can do here real quick. Just to kind of show you guys really what this software has to offer. Uh, let's go into the extrude and just see what we can mess around with. Um, S for symmetry. And then yeah, you can uh, do some cool stuff with it. Give them some ridges, let's do that real quick. So th this program is essentially like ZBrush. You could say it's very aimed towards sculpting as the name implies. I do believe it started out as a painting application though. And uh, yeah, I'm just showing you this guys as a possible video to come. Um, pretty busy still with moving out. Uh, I still got a few more things to do. Uh, I just want to kinda show you guys what I've been up to knowing that I still do want to make videos. I will try my hardest to get some of them out. Nope. I gave an ad to Apple, okay. And yeah. If there's anything you guys want me to kind of show off, like maybe instead of using Java, try to use more Godot or something. If you guys want that. Um, that's weird. Or the Anything you really guys want to see from me, just uh, drop a comment and I will try my best. Uh, one thing I do want to know is t or tell you guys about here is that 3D Coat runs off of voxels, and voxels is something I've, been, I've really been inter interested in lately. They're essentially 3D pixels. So typically, um, let me just zoom in for you guys here. This is going to get really slow. Typically a program that's using sculpting, what it does is it uses polygons. And while those are all great, they do have a limit. They basically, they can overlap with one another or this causes a lot of top, topological constraints. Whereas voxels being 3D pixels, they're actually the volumetric pixels. That's what voxel stands for. They essentially don't have that issue because this mesh entire thing is composed of what are essentially 3D pixels. You can almost think of it as actual sculpting clay where 
you can ch cut into it and there'll still be pieces underneath or you can cut a hole straight through it and you don't have to worry about any polygonal stretching stretching which is really really just awesome and i believe this is one of the only programs that does this so far so that's that's pretty cool um so yeah uh, you also have a bunch of these smart materials which you can expand down Let's just pick a random one you can see what you've been doing with like you can apply it to different pieces which is oh, oh by the way this also uses layers I forgot to mention which is really handy when sculpting so you can have eyes on one layer and you can see the skin or head whatever this is on another layer ears and eyes ears eyes mouth nose and it's really really cool I'm just gonna close out of that for now so yeah that's something I hope to uh, bring up in the future and lastly Godot Uh, you can see I have nothing right now. Let's just go new project. And let's just make one right now. Uh, Godot. Oh, that did not work. And, yeah, sure. Let's, why not? Um, test one, because I am creative. going on so yeah I haven't used this too much uh, create but I'll quickly show you guys what Godot is and then I'll probably make another video directly after this one um, just showing off some stuff so yeah Godot is a pretty cool engine you can do 2d 3d here's the 2d variation of it pretty simple and the 3d variation you see, uh, you move around with just like Blender with the middle mouse button. You can see your axes right there. So yeah, 3D World. You have a little scripter built in, as well as de as a, a debugger, uh, an asset library. And if I do end up using this, I'll mainly use it for 2D, as I plan on using other engines for 3D stuff. So one thing I love about Godot is, for one, it's open source. So that means that you can modify it if you wish. If you know C++, which Godot is written in, you can help advance the, the software. It's moving into a Vulkan API render backend. And with that is, it's essentially a backend that's new from the Kronos group. They're the ones who maintain OpenGL, create the standard for it. And it's a faster, more easily implementable, well, I shouldn't say easily implementable, uh, system of graphical callbacks, etc. basically graphics stuff that can run on a multitude of systems. So for example, it can run on PC, obviously, PC, Mac, Linux, Android, which is based on Linux, um, iOS, which is based on a Unix-based system, I believe. I'm not qu quite sure about that. But essentially, if it, if it, it's a popular system, it can run Vulcan, Vulcan no problem. And what exactly does this mean? It means that um, basically any game that you create can be more easily ported to another system without using another rendering API. So on Windows, the main API, although it, you can use OpenGL on Windows fairly easily, the main API used is Direct3D, which is invented by Microsoft for Microsoft systems. The downfall to that is if you make a game with Direct3D and you want to port it to Mac, Mac has its own system. I can't remember what they called it. Um, but they use their own, so they had to port it over to their code base, etc. And you want to do that with every single device. That's a lot of work. Whereas if you use something like OpenGL or Vulkan, it's a standard that you can implement on multiple systems without changing much of the code or changing any of it at all, depending on the uh, complexity of your project. And the beautiful part about Vulkan is, even though the code is a lot more difficult, is you can essentially, because it's more difficult and you have to write more code, um, you'll have to actually code in all the, the optimizations yourself and make it faster so that no matter what system it's on, it should be fairly fast. 
so yeah that's some of the stuff I've been up to I've been doing a lot of research obviously um, only some slight um, project work hopefully getting into more of that me and a co-worker I work at fast food but a uh, fast food place but I have a co-worker who used to go to college for programming and we may or may not start just kind of hacking together some games just to learn some stuff so yeah um, hopefully I'll be getting into that and showing you guys how to create some artwork for games and the coding behind it and that's probably gonna be my next video hopefully I'll upload this video and the next video today within the same hour possibly probably not though but yeah um, so that's all I have for now um, I'll leave you with this beautiful code I wrote slash stole off a website and yeah thanks for watching guys